Hello, my name is Sima Vilkovic. I am the head of the Family Roots Research Section in Yad Vashem Archives. Uh, the lecture today is uh, about uh, exploring your family roots with Yad Vashem. Yad Vashem is the World Holocaust Remembrance Center. The primary part of Yad Vashem mandate is to gather material regarding all those members of Jewish people who were murdered and who and to perpetrate their names. Established as a Remembrance Authority in 1953 by the Act of Israeli Parliament Knesset, Yad Vashem was entrusted with the task of commemorating, documenting, gathering, and researching the Shoah of the six million Jews murdered by the German Nazis and their collaborators. The, de the destroyed Jewish community, the heroic ghetto and resistant fighters, and the writers among the nations who risked their lives to save Jews. It was established in 1953 by the first meetings regarding Yad Vashem uh, were already in 1946. Uh, the institution was open for the first time, but by that time its uh, uh, actual activity was postponed because of the independence war in Israel. Uh, in 2004, Holocaust Victims Names database was uploaded online for the first time. The name Yad Vashem is taken from the Bible and quoting the, uh, from Isaiah book, and I shall give them in my house and within my walls a memorial and a name that shall not be cut off. Who were the six million murdered in the Holocaust? The numbers don't come here who they were, how they lived, information about their family, what they were dreams, and how did they relate to us? Uh, present-day Jewish people. Um, David Berger, 22 years electrician from Vilna, who was shot to death by Nazis in 1941, uh, shortly after sending these words to his uh, friend Elsa, who immigrated to Palestine. He wrote, I should like someone to remember that there once lived a person named David Berger. For us as researchers, it's very important not only to collect the name but to uh, collect small pieces of puzzle to uh, try to reconstruct who were these people, uh, to find more personal details or to put them all together in order to imagine who they were. You see here the map of pre-war Europe and the darker is color, less names we were able to trace. That explains actually how Nazis acted. In the Western Europe, Jews were not killed in the place of their residence. They were taken to transportation and uh, sent to the east, to the ghettos and camps. During this process of transportation, they were recorded. That's why we can trace nowadays the majority of the names of Holocaust victims in the Western and Central Europe. The east we are going, the less names is possible to trace, especially in the territory of Soviet Union, where Jews were taken at the place of their living and were killed at the same places. Nazis uh, wrote it in the report only the numbers of killed Jews, numbers. because the names of Jews were not important for them at all. And um, uh, showing this map, I also want to stress uh, several uh, projects which are very important in Yad Vashem work, and I'll show you how we can trace some evidences. Um, as I told, um, the numbers were important and it was part of the process of uh, dehumanization or depersonalization of Jews. And I want to show you several examples of that. You can see here a, a page from the report um, written by Karl Yeager uh, from the um, territory of Soviet Union. Uh, this page shows uh, the numbers regarding Lithuanian towns. As an example, I'll tell, I can give you one um, town, Ukmergi in Lithuania, uh, and it's written that in 19th of August, 1941, uh, 298 uh, Jewish men, 255 Jewish women, and uh, 88 Jewish ch uh, children were killed. There are no names there at all. And uh, what we are doing nowadays, we are trying to reconstruct back and to give an identity to these people and to find who they were. Uh, as an example, I'll, tell, I'll show you this list. This is list of inmates in the concentration camp Mauthausen in Austria. 
these numbers are not prisoner numbers and this is list of persons. Nowadays with the modern technology and modern tools and our knowledge, we can take this number, just for example, taking one number and we can trace who this person was. Uh, we have um, prisoner cars from Mauthausen and here we see the same prisoner number, but we, we have here personal details of this person, family name, first name, place of residence, the street, the uh, date of birth, mother's name, and also the way with, uh, which person went through the war. Searching further and ta uh, taking the names and the dates, we can trace, in this case, the house committee records from Ghetto Lodge, and we see all the family together and we have more family details. And searching further, I also trace the, this ID card of, of the mother of this person. Unfortunately, I didn't find his own um, photo, but uh, this is photo of his mother. And I think, uh, personally, I always, always think that having a visual image is extremely important for us to uh, understand and to imagine these people. I'll give you another um, very important example, which is rather a, a rare example, but I still want to show you. This is the list of uh, crematorium burning in Auschwitz. Uh, it's, I have to say that it's, uh, it's very seldom list because a majority of Jews who were killed in Auschwitz were, were not recorded at all. Um, you can see here the date at uh, December 20, 1941. It's very early in the, in the process of uh, killing because of that it was still recorded. This is a list of uh, persons who were killed that day, but you see there are no names, there are, there are numbers. And in, in this uh, case, uh, fortunately for research, um, there is a photo of prisoner, which is also very seldom that we can uh, trace, unfortunately, but we can see here a photo of this prison. We have a number and uh, we have more documents about this person, but what I want to, to stress here that searching for the documents in the family uh, archives and family materials and official archives like Yad Vashem, you can trace not only such photos, but also uh, the normal photos. I, I mean that we can imagine how these people looked like in normal life. And I think it's, we want to remember them this way, not, not in prisoner row, but with, the, with their smile, with the family members, with normal clothes. It's into, I, I think it's very important to trade these uh, pieces and to remember this one. Um, what is nowadays central database of Shah victims' names online? It uh, consists uh, of over 7.5 million records related to 4.8 million Jews who were murdered during the Holocaust. Sometimes we have several records about the same person, sometimes not. We don't have records about all the Holocaust victims still, unfortunately. Uh, all these records also um, include uh, about a million names of um, people uh, in the Soviet territories who were, um, uh, who were evacuated by Soviet authorities to the East and majority of these people survived. There are also records that we don't know the final fate. As I mentioned, the release of deportation, for example, or lives from some camps or ghettos, where we know the fate of the person only on specific date, but we don't know the final fate of this person at the end of the war. Uh, at the same time, we started to upload it on online, the records uh, of survivors. It's a very important process for us and we are continue doing it, we just started. And I have to mention that a majority of these records don't have um, scans because of the privacy issues. Uh, we upload uploading only metadata, but you can always supplies and ask the question. Um, I want to show you also that, um, as I mentioned, uh, in, in, inside these records, um, we have about 40% of pages of testimony, which is very important collection of Yad Vashem. There are uh, 2.8 million pages of testimony uh, filled out by relatives, friends, researchers, and uh, all kinds of uh, uh, people. And we in Yad Vashem consider pages of testimony as virtual memorial for that people who don't have uh, real grave. 
and it's very important we always um, ask people to fill it out because in, in many cases this is the only record and the only commemoration of, of the Holocaust victim. I want to show you this page of testimony. This is in German, but there are pages of testimony in 14 languages. And I want to uh, present you how it can be uh, used uh, for genealogy uh, proposals. So what, we, what information what we have in the page of testimony? First of all, family name, first name, uh, names of parents, uh, mother's name, maiden name, um, occupation, uh, place of birth, place of residence, place of death, a reason of death, uh, date of death, uh, picture, and very important, field is submit information. By this information, we can trace relatives who submitted this page of testimony and maybe these are family members who we didn't know they are, are survived and we can uh, reunite with the family. It's always uh, sh should be taken into account such an opportunity. Um, about a year ago we started one uh, very important pro uh, project and uploaded the tool that we call clusters. Uh, in the past, when we searched uh, the family uh, name and personal name about the Holocaust victim, you received uh, different records separately. Nowadays, this cluster is kind of virtual folder, allows us to find all the records about the same victim together. And this, this gives us many opportunities for research. I'll show you what I mean. First of all, you can see clusters content all together. You can see uh, the information and all the documents about the same victim all together and, and compare them. And it also helps us uh, to estimate uh, the fate of the victim. As I told in some records, we cannot know what happened to the, to the person. And when we put different records about the same victim together, we can understand better what happened. Um, it also gives us an opportunity to locate submitters. I have to mention that in general, uh, Yad Vashem uh, database is not a genealogical database. It was created for commemoration of the victims. But it's very, very much uh, useful for genealogy purposes. Because of that, we can uh, here use it for tracing submitters. As I mentioned, if, for example, two persons filled out pages of testimony about the same victim, we can trace here who else trace uh, who else filled out the page and to apply maybe to the submitter and to find them. We also want to engage uh, public to help us. Um, uh, if you enter to the database and find several records about the same person who are still not in the cluster because this process is still continue, you can suggest us uh, your version, your cluster, and we'll check it uh, and. Uh, uh, will agree if you consider this is right. In many cases, only relatives can consider this is spoken about the same victim because sometimes relatives know a uh, family nickname or maybe uh, date of birth that is in many documents are not exact or maybe some more small uh, family detail that only a uh, very close person can know. And because of that, it's very important for us to receive feedbacks uh, of you, of researchers, of public who are trying to search in our database. Uh, as I told you, you can choose the records. You can put uh, these records together and compare what, what is the information in different uh, items. And after that, you can suggest us and sending your suggestion, filling out online form. Now, uh, I want to say several words about uh, genealogy in general and its importance for uh, exploring the database. I think one of the main aspects of family history is importance for uh, people's present day identity. Researchers can um, uh, see the tracing for the family roots as raising the question of self-identity and it's, it's become a form of identity work uh, for majority of, of people who are searching. Uh, family history provides a ground for process of self-understanding uh, and also uh, uh, connectedness. In addition, the transmission of memory to the next generation is one of the important factors of doing genealogy. It becomes especially relevant when we are speaking about uh, Jewish families. Holocaust vanished um, 
the whole communities. There are nobody to tell the family story in many cases. So the um, survivors did not tell their story and we know in many cases like that, uh, but by searching for the roots and translating it to the next generation, we are keeping Holocaust memory alive this way and we're preserving this for the, uh, for the generation. And I, I see in this, um, this task is very important for everybody and only together we can do it. Uh, the fields of genealogy is, um, became very much uh, demanded and popular. And as an example, I can uh, tell you that nowadays in Israel, uh, we have several genealogy courses. And um, in Yad Vashem, we are organizing now two courses together with our um, colleagues from different archives, from Central Zionist archives and from archives Kiddush Hashem. And um, we organize different genealogy events. And uh, I think this shows us how important this field is. Uh, genealogy research also uh, cannot exist without general historical and geographical context. I want to stress it because it's extremely important to study not only the specific details about family members, but also the general context to understand better which events happened and uh, why they happened. And, um, in, in this context, we can better understand what happened to our relatives. Uh, so um, I want to show you uh, technically how to search in Yad Vashem website. Uh, when you go to Yad Vashem website, to digital collections, Shoah names database, you are entering and you are searching by the, in, in a simple searching, you're searching by the family name and first name. Uh, I want to stress our uh, tools uh, which help us to, to search. First of all, um, uh, we are speaking about synonym system. In Yad Vashem database, we build the system that allows us um, to search variants. That means uh, it doesn't matter how you spell the family name or the first name. I know for English speaking people, it's uh, sometimes very important and it's it's um, uh, sometimes uh, there is a feeling that th there are different names, but um, in our approach, these are the same names. Uh, what you can see here, the example of Burstein, for example, um, it doesn't matter how it's spelled in English or in different European languages in, in uh, lesson letters. It also can be written in Cyrillic or in Hebrew letters. All the uh, phonetical variants of the same family name are put together. And when you search it in one of the variants, you're receiving all that answers, all the variants together. It's also um, the same system in the first names. There are many nicknames and names of the person in different languages, but you're receiving all the uh, results about the searching. Uh, the same system is relevant for geography. Uh, our geography uh, established for the beginning of the war in uh, 19, uh, 39. Because of that, sometimes you see uh, uh, the geography is not um, really uh, connected to the present day geography. For example, uh, Vilnius or um, Lvov, uh, Vilna, not Vilnius, uh, will be in Poland in our database. And here you also can see an example of, of the city Bratislava, which in different languages uh, sounds different. If you would not put different names together, we could, uh, we could not find all the records about the same city. So if, if I, um, you write family name and first name and you're receiving the results, you can build a um, small family tree using the information, uh, small, uh, maybe a small branch of a family tree. You also can use different uh, pieces of information for understanding what happened to this person. Here, for example, I search for uh, the information about Epstein Agata, who was from uh, Wien, and he, she was sent to um, uh, Ghetto Lodge. In this uh, record from um, Austrian um, Center of Resistance, we can see uh, the transport where she arrived. And I'll show you further how to trace the details about this transport. Uh, you can see her address in Wien. And um, in the records from Ghetto Lodge, you have small additional details. For example, uh, her address in the ghetto. And uh, by this address, we can trace who else were together with her at the same address. And maybe there were relatives together with her. 
Um, we also see the page of testimony. As, as I mentioned already, we have here submitted information. In this case, we see uh, this is her son, and that means that he survived and we can trace the family who immigrated to United States. Um, if you want to do research about some specific place, not about the person, and to see who are the victims from this place, I suggest to do such a uh, research only about small places because if you're searching about big cities, it could be too many um, pieces of information to, to work with. As a, if, if you search for the small uh, places, towns or villages, it works very well. So here, for example, I searched for the small town Olkus in Poland. I received uh, 13, 000, about 13,000 results. I am pressing the red button, refund your search. And here I can um, play with all uh, different um, pieces of uh, materials to uh, make it easier to, to find what I search. Maybe I'm searching from specific, all the people with the same family name from this list. Maybe I'm searching uh, people with specific measure of occupation. Uh, maybe I'm searching um, only people who were uh, killed at military service or people who are appearing in the records from uh, memorial books. And I, I can choose here uh, the field which I want to, to, to check. It's very, um, very much uh, useful too, and I suggest you to use it also. Uh, when I want to see the um, record, so I'm pressing the name uh, and I'm receiving the uh, small, um, small image of scan material. And if I press more details, I can enter inside the record. I have to mention that even if the page of testimony, for example, in this case, I filled out in Hebrew or in different languages that you, uh, you cannot read. All these records are indexed in English and you can read metadata in English. It's very, very easy to, to understand. So here uh, there are two fields that you need to know. First of all, this is a um, uh, link to submitter. That means uh, you can find all the pages of testimony submitted by the same person. And it shows us um, additional family members altogether. Another important tool is submission of additions and corrections. And I was asked to explain also if somebody wants um, to send us additional materials about the same victim or to correct some um, information. So what we suggest, first of all, if you see the mistakes in, in the page of testimony, we cannot correct the historical document. We only can correct if this is our um, mistake that's happened, that's happened sometime, but we are happy to correct it, to tell us about it. But if it's information recorded, written by the submitter, for us, this is historical information, and this is a knowledge of the submitter. So we cannot correct it, but we ask you to submit a new page of testimony, to send us additional material, and we'll put it all together, these documents, to the cluster by the same victim. And this also gives us um, more richer uh, picture about the same person. So um, uh, as I told, when you press to the button of the submitter, receiving all the documents that this person has submitted. At the same time, if you go to advanced search in the first page, you also can arrive to uh, submit information and to search only by submitter. It also gives the opportunity to, to trace. Now, this is very briefly about uh, central database of Shoah victims' names. I want to show you Another uh, databases and very important pages of, at the uh, Vashem website. Um, as you see, um, Yad Vashem archives is one of the biggest in the world about the Holocaust. And we have uh, about uh, 220 million pages of documentation. So I want to show you um, the records which are online on Yad Vashem website of archives. So you can go to the document archives. We are trying uh, to upload as much as possible uh, online. Uh, sometimes it's not really possible because of our agreements in different archives. And sometimes we can upload only uh, metadata without scans. Anyway, in our um, insight in Yad Vashem, in our library, you can find much more materials, but all the time we're editing more materials online. 
So if you go to document archives, and I suggest you to go to advanced search, it's more useful. So you can uh, search, if you know that, uh, for example, family submitted some material, you can search by the family names. But if you want to search some um, phenomenon or maybe events, you can search by the keywords, but you need to, to think which keywords to use. And here I wanted to show an example. I searched for letters and I wanted to show for letters from Warsaw. Um, as you see, it doesn't matter if I'm writing it in um, English or in Polish version, but uh, the geography should be written in, in English, not in Hebrew letters in this case. So I'm receiving results online. When I enter the item, I can see the information about this uh, item and scan. So uh, I'm read the, uh, the scan and here you can see uh, the material, the letter written in Warsaw 1942. I, I need to mention that um, uh, we keep the documents at the languages um, what they were written and we don't translate uh, the, the records in, in, which are in archives. Uh, we uh, only translate some, the resume some small information about in general about the item. But if you want to research the uh, documents you need to, to understand the language. So uh, photo archives, it's also online. You can enter it into search uh, by some uh, family uh, name, maybe also geography, some phenomenon. Uh, using this um, photo archives collection online, you're receiving uh, actually photographs from free collection uh, of Yad Vashem, from free departments, from the archives. From the Hall of Names, all the photographs which attach to the pages of testimony are also searchable by this field. And uh, in addition, photographs from the um, Department of Writers among the Nations also uh, appears here in the search. Um, if you search in the field um, keywords, and I ask you to use um, short um, searching, don't write the whole uh, sentence, but use the word and between two words like for technical reasons in order to uh, uh, give an opportunity for machine to say the boss words. And here I search children and the key. There are a lot of photos from displaced persons camps after the war. And just for example, this is very beautiful photos of children, survivors and children who were born in DP camps. And here you can see one of the examples. Um, now I want to uh, present you two very important projects of Yad Vashem Research Institution, which can be very useful for uh, genealogy purposes. Uh, first of all, uh, this is deportation database. As you remember in the beginning, I mentioned the two different ways of uh, Nazi acting in Western Europe and the, in the East. So in Western Europe, when uh, Jews were taken to the transports, um, they were in, in many cases records. My colleagues from the uh, deportation department uh, took specific um, uh, transportation and research. So the result of their research we can see online, searching by the place or by the date of transportation or sometimes by the number if we know. So you're receiving the results, you are entering the specific transport and here you have um, explanation what this transport was, transport route, map, survivors' testimonies, if they exist. Agencies of deportation, information about victims, uh, biographical sources, um, archival sources. It's very a rich um, source for research and for understanding, but we have to take into account there are not all uh, the transports were um, researched. Uh, the right transport, there is no information, unfortunately. But anyway, they continue working and there will be more uh, transports online in the future. They're still working. Uh, another very much important uh, project is connected to the territory of Soviet Union. It's called uh, Untold Stories. Why it's called Untold Stories? Because as I mentioned, um, in this territory, uh, the whole um, communities were uh, killed and there are no people who, uh, who can tell their story. Uh, my colleagues from this department take specific place in the territory of former Soviet Union, Belarusia, Ukraine, Russia, 
uh, Lithuania, and uh, they research what's happened in that place. I'll show you how uh, the searching here works. You're entering um, or the con to the country or to the community, and you are searching for the specific town. Uh, also here, not all the towns were searched. Sometimes there are no information, unfortunately, but um, also they continue working and there will be more information online. Uh, so here, for example, I uh, choose the uh, uh, town called Babrusk in Belarus, Belarus. So um, there are three parts of this project. First of all, there is an explanation uh, what was the Jewish community in the town, uh, when it appears, what were statistics, what they did in the town, uh, how they lived. After that, uh, the information about murder sites. And here you can see uh, related to sources. There are written testimonies, uh, information from German reports, and also information from Soviet Extraordinary Commission. It was uh, the commission established in 1943. Uh, the members of the commission uh, entered uh, uh, just after the liberation by Red Army to the places. And they asked, um, they took testimonies of local people and they made list of victims. And this is the main source uh, on the territory of, of the Soviet Union. So um, I want to show you here uh, some examples. And you can see, as an example, I, I'm quoting uh, about uh, town Bobrus uh, carrying out a special action. A total of 5,281 Jews of both sexes were shot. The town of Bobrus and its nearby area is now free of Jews. So I mentioned already such a record, but it's also evident um, what were German reports. Uh, the third uh, part of this project is commemoration. After the war, um, survivors, uh, if, they, if somebody survived, they came back to the places and they tried to um, establish some memorials about uh, their killed uh, relatives. Uh, only in the late 40s it was allowed and it was written even sometimes in Yiddish on this memorial, but there are really few memorials um, like this. Uh, during all the Soviet time after the war, it was forbidden, um, restricted to, um, to make such memorials. All the memorial that existed just was written on them uh, that uh, Soviet citizens were killed by uh, German fascists. There were, there were no any uh, mentioning about Jews in this uh, memorial plaques or, or some, some memorials. Uh, so only after the destroying of Soviet Union in 1991, Jewish communities in different towns and cities started to, um, uh, to establish really uh, significant memorials in these places. And they continue doing it still. Uh, one more very important database in our um, um, and, and, and department of Yad Vashem is Writers Among the Nation. Uh, nowadays, uh, there are more than two, uh, 26,000 um, uh, gentle people who received this uh, title. These are people who uh, risk their life to, uh, to save Jews. So the database is online. We can search. Um, by the name of the uh, of the survivor or by the name of of the writer uh, if you want to learn about um, uh, some city or some town if there were the writers you can also search by the geographical location here just for example i i put the uh, town Sholai, shavli in lithuania i received 126 names and cases of writers among the nation when i press uh, the name i'm receiving the story an explanation, what happened, how it happened, um, when this person received this title, where his name is recorded. In Yad Vashem, if you want our campus, um, uh, under each uh, tree, we have a memorial plaque in the memory of uh, writer among the nation, but several years ago was established garden of writers, and the name of writers also is recorded on the wall of honor. Um, we're also uploading online uh, survivor's testimony. Uh, it started not long ago. You can search now. Uh, there are only 200 
first uh, testimonies online. I mean the whole testimony, which is rather long. Uh, it can be searchable online. But at the same time, um, if you want to search about specific uh, phenomenon or geograph geographical location, you can try some video testimony resource center and you can find some uh, small pieces when survivors explain about some events or phenomena. Sometimes um, when there are no information about relatives, um, we know uh, approximately their way, but we don't have their evidences. Uh, we suggest um, family members or researchers to search for testimonies of, of survivors who were in similar situation, who went through similar way during the war, similar route. And sometimes it helps us to understand what happened to our relatives. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel with, and you can trade there all kinds of materials, um, visual materials. And I want to stress um, and to, 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 to tell you about a very important project. It's called Girl in the Fragments. It was started um, 10 years ago already. This is really a national company uh, in Israel uh, because Yad Vashem uh, un uh, understood that uh, Holocaust related materials which are kept at home should be saved. In Yad Vashem, we have very good condition for keeping the materials, preserving them, and um, also for, for presenting to the world. So um, there were uh, many, many submitted with the materials. We received, we received more than uh, 300,000 um, items during these 10 years. Um, many, I, I can give an example um, from the, uh, that many young people um, made Aliyah in 30s before World War II. They wrote to Palestine, Mandat Palestine, and they correspondent with their relatives in Europe. In their families nowadays, there are a lot of photographs, family letters, and all kinds of material that they received from the youth. In many cases, the, these are last letters, last postcards which, which were sent by their relatives. And it's very important to keep such items in order to tell the family story. So Yad Vashem helps these people to keep it and to, to present and to research. Um, People donate us original material. Sometimes if they want to keep it at home, they donate us scan material, digital file. And it's uh, all these materials uh, go through the process of cat catalogization, digitization and preservation. And um, after that, we are uploading it online. And it's, uh, it's available for researchers, for family members, for uh, students who are searching for information. And the, the, the think and the seed is a very important task to, to continue doing it. Uh, you can enter the website and to read uh, some important and interesting stories uh, because what is very important for us, not only to collect materials, for example, photographs or letters, we want to know the story behind this item. Because only photograph doesn't say us anything. We don't know who are these people. But if the submitter of the material tell us how he connected to these people, what he knows about or she knows about these victims, what the history of this family, what happened to family members, we can reconstruct the family history. Now, uh, Yad Vashem is an official um, copy holder of Arizon archives which is one of the largest archives connected to the World War II. Uh, it's uh, the archives itself in, in uh, Germany. Um, we have the digital database and we, we use it very widely. And also uh, uh, Arizona uploaded um, many materials online on, on their website, but this was the common project with the Yad Vashem because it's based on Yad Vashem technology. So um, it's also very, very much important database for searching of the relatives. Um, if you have questions or inquiries, you always can apply to our reference service. You can see an email where to apply. I think it will be also sent to you in the chat box now. Uh, you also can uh, apply via website, filling out uh, online form. 
um, we are answering all the letters. We also giving um, Zoom, me, uh, Zoom um, consultation for people who are abroad and who can't uh, come to Yad Vashem nowadays. Um, I want to mention that sometimes it takes time, about a month maybe, but we help everybody who applies. Uh, in addition, I want to tell that we are really um, um, uh, developing the uh, field of genealogy and family researching in, in archives and we are um, organizing all kinds of events. And for example, in, in autumn, we are organizing genealogy symposium uh, in Zoom, it's a little bit international symposium, and we'll be very glad if you participate. It will it will be announced further in uh, further month, but uh, I think it's very important field that we all of us understand that we need to participate in, in it. I think I am finishing the presentation, and I'll be glad to answer questions. First of all, Sima, thank you so very, very much for a fascinating lecture. Um, on behalf of everyone here, I am so grateful to have participated. Um, we've had a number of questions that um, we'd, I'd like to have you start answering some if you don't mind. Um, firstly, there was a whole series of questions regarding actually submitting information. If people have photographs or names or pages of testimony that they're interested in submitting, how do they do that? And more specifically, in the event that they have a photograph that they would like to attach to an existing page of testimony, how does one going go about doing that? If you could just, you know, touch on those points first. Okay, and I'll explain. I, I, I talked about it a little bit, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you once more. I think it's very important uh, point. Uh, when you find the information online, as I told, you can submit additions and corrections. Editions mean that you can attach photograph, for example. As I mentioned, it's very much important to have visual image together with page of testimony. Uh, so just send us a, a digital file. Our colleagues from Hall of Names will attach it. Um, it's not automatically comes to, to the website. It's come to our uh, colleagues, they uh, work on it and in several months it appears online. Now, if you want to submit pages of testimony, you can do it online uh, or to download the page of testimony and to print it out uh, in, in the language that is comfortable for you and uh, fill it out by the handwriting. And we always think that this is better way because in this way we have some kind of personal connection. It's not via the computer and to send us by post. Uh, it's also an opportunity. In addition, as I mentioned, the um, our department of gathering the fragments will be really glad to help you if you want to submit us materials. You can apply to the email collect, um, or you easily can find um, it's on the website. It's called gathering gather the fragments. And uh, my colleagues will explain how to do it. Sima, is that also the case if, if people here, they're asking a question if they have information to add to the archives, if they have additional information than what they've been able to find in our archives. Similarly, they should also um, contact Gathering the Fragments? Yes. If, if somebody wants to uh, add information to the um, item about the victim, about the one person, you can send us via website uh, some additions to the page of testimony, for example. But if you have many items or several uh, items about family, or I don't know, about some Holocaust related um, materials, it's better to apply to the gather, gather the fragments and, and to submit via this department. Okay, thank you very much. Um, another question that we have, um, if someone wants to donate an artifact, how do they yeah. go about doing that? I, if you can possibly potentially, I, I'm not sure who that, who, where the person who asked the question is from, but if you could potentially address from within Israel and also from outside of Israel, if possible. Yes. Uh, okay. First of all, artifacts are coming to the museum, not to the archives, because we have a museum of artifacts. But uh, it's still, uh, you still need to apply to gather the fragments to the email collect at yadvashem.org.il. And my colleagues will explain that there is a way how to send 
uh, not by usual post, by, by, by some specific, um, I don't know exactly which company they use, but um, uh, in order the materials to be safe, to arrive safely to, to your machine, they have a way. Okay, thank you. Um, we have enough, we have a more specific question. I'm just gonna make it a little general. If someone's interested in searching for birth records, how would you recommend that they go about doing that? Okay, unfortunately, this is not our field. Uh, we don't have, uh, we only have birth records and somebody submitted it, but we don't have uh, in general materials, uh, what is called vital records, birth, death and, and uh, marriages. Uh, you need to apply to local archives from where a person were in, in Europe. Okay, thank you very much. Um, another question, do we have access to adoption records? I'm assuming the reference is to post-war adoption records. No, unfortunately, we don't have. It's also kept in in, um, um, in the archives uh, of the regional in the regional archives in the Europe from where people came. Okay, thank you. Um, and um, if someone has pictures and they're interested in receiving help identifying who is in the pictures, is that something that we can help with? Oh, I think opposite. We can uh, <laughs> we can uh, receive your help in identifying people, and it's happened rather uh, often when somebody applies and tell we know this person. So if we have it, we of course publish it, but uh, we cannot identify if we don't have it. we don't have it unfortunately. And we'll be glad if you help us with that. Uh, I, I just I see in, um, the question in the chat in the last questions. Maybe I'll answer fastly because I mentioned it, if the pages of testimony are written in Hebrew letters, and you can see it and scan, but all these uh, pages of testimony, all the records that you see online are indexed in English. You need to read the metadata, the digital data, and you see it only in English, it's, it's, it's much easier. Okay. Um, another question that came up is, do we have records from the Nazis as opposed to just Yisker books or survivor testimonies? No, no, we have material from the both sides, the Jewish side and the Nazi side, of course. Um, and it's very important for us to see the both, uh, the picture from the both sides. But uh, it uh, very much depends on the geographical locations, if the right, if the materials are existing. And it's uh, unfortunately not always we can trace the materials. Okay, um, thank you. Um, we have a question here also, I'm not sure if this is something that you can answer, perhaps you can direct somebody to get some help. Someone's been experiencing some challenges using our, trying to use our transportation database. Um, you actually can apply to our reference service. We'll send a link. If, if this transportation is existing in the database, not everything is existing, but uh, if we found, found it, we, we'll send a link just to click and to enter the specific transport. Okay, and um, I guess we have time for maybe two more questions. Someone here would like to know what is our, what is the Advertime's experience working with other archives, specifically in Eastern Europe, in order to obtain more information that they have? Yeah, we are cooperating very actively in different archives in Europe and also in the United States with the USHMM, Holocaust Memorial Museum. Um, we are working together, we, um, we have common projects and we have uh, in our position department, we have we are seeing many, many materials from different archives in Eastern Europe specifically. Okay, thank you. And I guess maybe um, one final question. Um, if someone did a previous search for family records seven years ago or any number of years ago, is it worthwhile for them to return and do a new search? And I guess really the underlying question here is how often is Yad Vashem adding information? How often should people be returning to see if there's more information that they didn't receive if they've already done a certain comprehensive search within the Yad Vashem records? Of course, it's a very important question because we are uploading new materials one, uh, once in three months. So four times a year, we are uploading uh, new material that already entered our database. That means I really recommend to check at least once a year <laughs> what's happened in our database. And also to apply, we can recommend uh, maybe some ways of searching in different archives, where to apply and what to do if there are no materials, what, 
how the history can be learned, maybe in some um, literature or some additional materials. Okay, great. Um, and there, there are a number of more questions. I just, you know, we, we are short on time. Um, perhaps I would encourage people who have not received answers to their questions to contact um, Seema at the, at the address that we've left. Um, and, you know, someone will get back to you and, and hopefully help you find whatever your information you're looking for and answer to your question. Um, I do want to take this opportunity to thank you very, very much, Seema. This has been just tremendous. I really, really appreciate it. I hope this was helpful to all of you listening, or at the very least, as interesting it was for you guys as it was for me. Um, and I will wish everyone a great morning, afternoon, or night, depending on where you are. And I uh, hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. And please don't hesitate to apply us. We'll try to have everybody. Good luck in your searching. <laughs>